Welcome, welcome. Today I'm going to be doing a full face of my current makeup favourites. I've also got a few other non-makeup things in here like perfumes and a little like bit of skincare. I'm going to put them all on my face and tell you why I like them. Today's video is sponsored by Wild Deodorant, who not only are they my favourite deodorant brand ever and I literally will not use anything else, they have collaborated with another one of my favourites, Disney, on the launch of the new The Little Mermaid film and they have this gorgeous limited edition Little Mermaid case and they have a new Ocean Mist limited edition scent, which obviously this goes inside your case. If you didn't know, Wild Deodorant is a natural deodorant brand. You get these cases which are refillable and then you just buy the little refills to go in them and these are actually compostable. So the idea is obviously you have your case and then you just get the refills for it. You can get them on a monthly basis. You can sign up for their subscription and choose how many you get, choose which scents you want. There's no strings attached, so you can cancel at any time. You can try it, and if you don't like it, you can cancel it. Or if you do like it, like I have for the past few years, then they literally just show up on your doorstep. I mean, this is the kind of packaging that you get when you have a case as well, but usually I've just had actually my monthly um, delivery. They come in a little cardboard packaging like this. And I do have a discount code, which is SOF Disney. I will put it on the screen. I will put it down below in the description box. And it gets you 20% off of all of Wild's products, I believe. I've personally been using Wild deodorant for the past few years now, and I will not use anything else. There are times when I've got to the end of one of my deodorants and we're in a rush and I need to like retwist it and put my new one in, or I'm running around and I'm late and I'm like, James, where's my deodorant? And he'll be like, oh, just use mine. And I'm like, no, I'm not using your antiperspirant because I do not want to have to go through the whole process of my body adjusting to it again. And I used to find that a lot of antiperspirant like spray on deodorants would irritate my armpits. Whereas with Wild, they don't contain harsh chemicals. They don't clog up your armpits like a regular antiperspirant. They do also have some scents on their website that are specifically designed for sensitive skin. I just find personally that this works a lot better for me than other deodorants that I've tried ever before in my life. It doesn't actually stop you from sweating, but it stops you from smelling, if that makes sense. And oh my God, I can't even tell you how excited I am to actually go and watch this film. I think it's out on the 26th of May. But anyway, you literally just pinch the two little buttons on the side here. Pull the bottom bit off. Slide out your little refill. This Ocean Breeze one, by the way, is super fresh. It's a very sort of like fresh, calming sort of scent. So you take your little refill, you pop it on to this base like that. And then you literally just take this part and pop it back on. And then you should be good to go. And you just twist it up from the bottom like this. Oh, by the way, when you're changing the refills, just make sure that this is wound all the way down to the left until you can't twist it anymore. Otherwise, these bits just won't come off. So little tip there. They do do other ones as well in loads of different colours. You can get your name engraved onto the top of them. It's just a really simple way if you want to reduce your plastic waste. And obviously, you're not just chucking like cans of deodorant in the bin every month. I know that with some people, natural deodorant isn't for them and that's fine. But just to let you know, it can take your body a few weeks to kind of adjust to it while I guess your armpits sort of declog from your regular antiperspirant. Thank you to Wild for sponsoring this part of the video and I cannot wait to go see this film. Congrats Wild on the Disney collaboration. That's really cool. So that's my favourite deodorant. Let's talk about some of my favourite makeup. I now kind of just look like I'm sat in front of a green screen. I can promise you I'm not. It's just the sun. <laughs> a little skincare thing first. I've been loving the Kiehl's Hyaluronic Acid Serum. I loved the L'Oreal Hyaluronic Acid, the one in like the purple packaging. This Kiehl's one is very similar but I feel like it's a slightly thicker formula and feels ever so slightly more hydrating. I don't really know how, I don't know why, but it's just a really nice formula. It does not ball up on my face underneath my makeup because some of my hyaluronic acid serums I just use at nighttime because they kind of ball up, but this one doesn't, so I can use it under my makeup, which is great. And I just think it's a really great serum. It just feels moisturizing, doesn't sting. It says that it only has seven ingredients, which is great. The reason why I must like this under makeup is because the second ingredient is glycerin. Very cool. So for primer, I've been loving this NYX one, which is the Plump Right Back. And and this is the texture of it. Sorry, my nails will look really weird colours. This one is not yellow, it's just the nail polish. I don't know how well you can see that texture. It's kind of like a gel moisturiser kind of texture. Did I just say kind of twice? I think I did. I tend to switch up my makeup products quite often, like when I'm not on camera. But because I try so many different products on camera and off camera, I sometimes forget about which ones I've spoken about and which ones I haven't. And obviously all of my previous favourites that I have mentioned in these kind of videos, those all still stand. But sometimes I just forget that I have certain things and then I forget if I've mentioned them or not. I don't think I've mentioned this that often on camera, but please forgive me if I've spoken about this more often. It actually reminds me quite a lot of the e.l.f. Power Grip kind of primers, which I still love those. This one is maybe a little bit more hydrating and a little bit less sticky, but it still has that sort of like sticky feeling while still feeling hydrating. For foundation-y kind of things, I'm still using, like I switch them up so often depending on like where I'm going and depending which one I'm like reaching for that day. I've run out of my L'Oreal um, drops 
those ones absolutely bloody love i was using my nars one quite a lot when i was away like the nars light reflecting i'm still using Nab the nabla skin tint but two new ones that have come into my favorites kind of category the bourgeois healthy mix foundation which is now back in Superdrug in the uk and i have been loving this foundation i just think it's so good it's really hydrating it's lightweight doesn't irritate my skin it has a really nice sort of like subtle glow to it and then another one is the iconic super smoother blurring skin tint i've got mine in the shade fair warm i mostly use these iconic drops on the days where most of my tan has come off and i'm looking a little bit more pale but i'm still quite not back to my regular pale self <laughs> does that make sense days like today i wouldn't say these are particularly glowy they're a little bit more satiny it's not matte but it's not like super hydrating you know so i feel like if you have oily skin and we're wanting to try a skin tint maybe give these ones a go i have a video where i'm testing a whole load of new drugs for makeup where i put this on so go check that out if you want to see this on my face but today i'm going to put on the iconic skin tint i don't actually have much left in here also i don't know what happened but literally like a couple days after i arrived in america my forehead popped up with a whole load of texture and i have got no idea why that happened whether it was like the plane or the maybe the water's different in america like i have got no idea so i'm just gonna use a brush to blend that in also i have recently tried the new maybelline skin tint which i ordered off of amazon and i've really been enjoying that too i just like to switch up my base products depending oh shit oh no okay i also used the the, the ordinary niacinamide serum underneath my makeup for the first time today and i don't think it likes it because it is starting to ball up between my eyebrows has anybody else used the ordinary niacinamide serum is it not under makeup friendly i mean i think that's what is. For my concealer, I actually have some rediscoveries of concealers that I used to use and then stopped using and I recently got them back out again and was like, oh my god, they're really good. The first one is the Urban Decay Naked Stay Naked Correcting Concealer. I've got the shade 30NN. But yeah, I've just been using this on days where I haven't really been wanting to wear much makeup and I've been using this to conceal blemishes. It's got really good coverage actually and you just need a little bit. So yeah, I've mostly been using that on no makeup makeup days. And then another rediscovery is the Benefit Boing Cakeless Concealer. I've got the shade number three for under my eyes i've got the shade number four for my spots which at the moment this will be too dark for me because tan's faded and all that jazz i'm gonna use number three under my eyes and hope that this isn't gonna be too dark today but i recently rediscovered this in a video i can't remember which video it was was it the chat gpt picks my makeup maybe and i was like oh my god why did i stop using this concealer because it has really nice coverage and it blends really nicely and i think it's really good and oh my god currently my skin looks like shit because of whatever i've used under my makeup here but i am so determined to not take it all off and start again <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to go take off my makeup, aren't I? Can you see how badly it's like coming off here and balled up? I'm gonna go start again, but get back to this point and I will see you. Wait, why am I even bothering to blend? I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've redone everything without that serum underneath and it's looking perfectly fine. Gotta say, with this product, I put this in a video of products that I didn't like. And then from that video, I was like, you know what? It's actually really good for nose contour. And I have been picking up this Fenty stick in the shade Amber Suede purely just to contour my nose because it's a really good shade for that and it looks really natural. And I don't really use it on the rest of my face, but just for my nose. I mean, that's kind of a waste of a product. And like, I wouldn't repurchase it just to do my nose if that makes sense sense i don't know you know what i am gonna put a little bit on my cheeks but i find that on my cheeks it just ends up looking a little bit muddy and it's a bit more difficult to blend but because it's a little bit more of like a stiff product it works really well on your nose then for my cheeks since i did that like testing makeup hacks kind of video where i mixed a liquid highlighter with liquid blush this has been my favorite cheek combo however the rare beauty blush and happy we all know about that so one that i don't think i've mentioned as like a favorite of mine is the p louise cheek of it in the shade peach of my heart this was one of those things that i got roped into buying off of a TikTok shop and I actually really like it. The only thing is though, I can't seem to get this to go back down. So it does make a little bit of a mess and like there's so much that's all like in the lid, but it's not the end of the world, I suppose. Give it a squeeze and then, oh shit, I didn't blend out that contour. <laughs> One sec. Yeah, I don't really like it on my cheeks. <laughs> Let's try that again. So I just do like a big old dot of that. And then the highlighter that I was on about was the Beauty Crop in the shade Pear Pressure. They've changed the packaging for this now. It's got a pump on it. I think but I think it is still the same shade so I'm just mixing a little bit of that in and I feel like the glowiness does actually show through your powder which is pretty cool which is why 
I like doing this. Who'd have thought you'd ever see me using a liquid highlighter? For powder, I ran out of my ColourPop No Filter and I was gonna order another one and then I was like, you know what? So if you've got so many powders, try and use up a couple of others first. So I've been using the Laura Mercier, but I've also been trying to use up this one, which is the Beauty Crop. Sorry, I don't know what James is doing downstairs. Vitamin Babe Powder in the shade Fair One. The only thing is, if you do have very fair skin, it's gonna be too dark. Like it's quite a dark fair powder. I think maybe they do have a white one that's fully translucent, but we need one in the middle because it's a really nice finely milled powder. It makes your face look really smooth. I've still been loving my Trigwell powder puffs. Blend out all that creasage. Take some on the powder puff. Tap it off on my hand and then push under my eyes. I don't know if it's because it oxidizes slightly. Like I can't quite figure out what it is, but I feel like it just makes my face overall look darker. Like when you first put it on, it looks really bright, but then I don't know, does it get darker or am I just delusional? I'm not sure. I just think that when I'm when I'm at my playlist, like I can't use this, it just makes me look a little bit orange. I don't know if you can see, there's still like a tiny bit of glow that comes through that powder from the liquid highlight, which is cool. Then my little secret weapon is the Maybelline Superstay Powder Foundation and wait, that's not the shade I've been using. I've been telling everyone that the one that I was using was uh, shade 5. It's actually shade 3. This is shade 5. I mean, I have both. I also have shade 10, which is my shade for when I'm tanned. Shade 5 is a tiny bit more pink than shade three. But you can see I'm starting to get a little dent in this. The main thing that I've been using this for, which is an absolute slay, is taking some of this powder, taking a tiny bit on the end of my trig well, and anywhere where I need extra coverage, like can you see? I've got a little scar here. Literally just take it, dab it on blend it in and it just disguises most things. You can also use this to kind of like, I guess, carve out your contour, add any extra coverage, but I mostly use this to add extra coverage onto blemishes. It's so good for that. And actually even more natural looking if you just take like a little brush and dip it in and just dab a little bit on. I did post a TikTok about this. It's just a great little powder if you have any areas where you need extra coverage. I have no new favorite powder bronzer, so let me just do that quickly. Let me know down below though, what is your, or maybe like your top five or top three, what are your favorite products at the moment because mine change so often. There are some classic favorites that I feel like I will have for the rest of my life and I'm constantly trying to find things that are better than those. But yeah, I switch up my products in my daily life quite often and half of them I forget to bloody show you on camera and half of them I forget that I've mentioned them about 50 times. Now this I have definitely mentioned and I'm scared to open it up because it is shattered into a million pieces and I have not had time to repair it since coming back from being away but this is the Rare Beauty Highlighter in the shade Mesmerize. I will be repressing this this. I use this more as a blush or like a blush topper, but the formula of these highlighters is stunning. They are just so fragile. Like I didn't even take it away with me. So if you have one of these, just be super, super, super careful with it. I have got a YouTube short video on how I repaired my other shades of these. I do actually have a backup as well, but I don't want to crack open the backup yet because there's still so much usable product in this, you know? And oh my God, I love it on my nose. Like look how gorgeous. And oh my God, since I use this Refi Brow, thing. I mean, to be fair, I've only had this for a few weeks, but I've used it pretty much every day since I bought this. I've got the shade Medium Brown. It's their Brow Tint Gel. And I at first I was bashing this because I was like, why is the applicator so weird? Like, why has it got this ball on the end of it? Didn't get it. Then saw a video saying that apparently the reason it has this ball is to get the maximum amount of product into your eyebrows, but without getting it on your skin. And I was like, oh, there's no way that that would work. Oh my God, I say that. I've literally just got it on my skin. Let me zoom you in. To be fair, I did just back comb it through my brows. You're probably not supposed to do that. Um, like, oh my god, I did just get it on my skin. <laughs> that doesn't usually happen though. Like if you just apply it normally without like rushing it backwards. I found myself reaching for this pretty much every day. And I really like it. It just deposits a little bit of tint into your eyebrows, but not too much. And it does keep them there as well. Like they seem to stay in place all day. I like it. And I think it's a good shade as well. I like how it sort of makes them look separated. It's not my favorite brow gel that I've ever, ever used, but I do actually really like it. I think mostly just because I really like the color of it. It's like a nice kind of cool toned brown. Also really been enjoying this Nude Sticks one again, which I seem to dip in and out of the Brew, 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 the Brew Boost, the Brew Boost, Brow Boost and set gel in extra large, which I believe was a Kathleen Lights collaboration, was it not? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Really like that one as well. Don't know where I put my next brow pen, but obviously that is still my favorite. You will know when something overtakes that because I think it will be never. Something that I'm just gonna put on because my lips are looking a bit crusty and dry, yum, is a lip balm, which is super random that I've been really enjoying. And the name of this, like, why did MAC call them this? They are called the MAC Squirt 
plumping gloss sticks. I don't know. And they come in loads of weird colours like blue, black, green, hot pink. So this looks like it's going to be hot pink, but then you actually put it on, you twist it up like this, you can't twist it back down, which is the only thing that's slightly annoying. But oh my god, it smells like a MAC lipstick, but then it has this sort of like minty cooling sensation, and it's like ever so slightly plumping, but not like painful plumping, like a nice cool sensation, you know? But, but oh my god, such a nice tinted lip balm. I'll show you the colour, so can you see, it's just like a sheer wash, but then by the time I've done this, and sort of blended it in. It really does not look as hot pink as this because I don't really like wearing bright pink lip colors, but it's not really bright pink because it's so sheer. Like obviously if you built it up, maybe it could be, but it's very, very sheer. I even have the black one, which I use sometimes and the blue one even, which I've opened downstairs. I just seem to have like an open lip balm in every single room of the house. It just feels really good. I actually bought some new lip liners when I was in Superdrug the other day because I was like, I need to find some new ones that are not the rare beauty ones. Uh, this one is from L'Oreal. I cannot tell you if it's a favorite because this is the first time that I'm using it. In the shade CN Sunset. For eyeshadow this month, I've not been wearing that crazy, that amount of like crazy eyeshadow. I have been reaching for this a couple of times, which is the Jordana Tisha Neutrals Palette. But I've just mostly been using this, to be honest, like to go for the sort of darker brown shades to just add on the outer corners or to put like one of these shades kind of through my crease. It's a really nice matte neutrals palette. It has pretty much every single shade in there that you can need for like a matte eye look, which is nice. Not particularly colorful and crazy and interesting, but it's nice. They blend really nicely as well. But one thing that I do want to say is that I've been loving like colorful eyeliners, gems, stuff that's simple to do and like not too much but also looks like you've made a lot of effort. And oh my god, these, the Glisten Cosmetics Chroma Flick Liners. I've used these in a video. I think it was my chat GPT pick my makeup one. They have quite a few different shades of these and each one of them is like a duochrome or multi-chrome. So this one in particular is called Peacock. It's like a bluey green. I was like, you know what? Let's do something mermaidy. So I'm going to use this one today. I'm just going to go for these kind of swirly patterns, which is something that I've not really done before, but I'm literally just gonna take a stab at it and see what happens. It's just the coolest colour. I mean, I know this is not exactly the most wearable everyday look, but I just wanted to have a bit of fun, play with it. That'll do just a casual, everyday, little, simple, quick, easy eyeliner look. Do you see what I mean about the colours though? They're just so cool. I just love, I think they're awesome. For mascara, this is a recent find and it's one that I hadn't tried before. Unless it's the same as the double-ended L'Oreal one that I used to love. I think this is a relatively new one. I could be wrong. I used to love a double-ended L'Oreal mascara, but I think it had like a white one on one end and a black one on the other end, but it was very, very similar to this. This is the Pro XL Lift Mascara and it's got the two different sides. Usually I just use one side at a time, but both sides are really nice and it does exactly what it says. It gives a lot of volume. It also gives a lot of length as well so I brought this away with me and this one I think definitely gives more volume and I've got to say my lashes at the moment are definitely improving I've been using that Olaplex lash serum which is so expensive it's literally like 68 quid I was gifted it and I thought you know what I'm gonna give it a whirl and I feel like it's actually been working which is kind of a shame because it's like I don't really want to be like yeah buy this 68 pound lash serum that is not the most easily accessible but i feel like it's starting to work maybe it's just completely random but my eyelashes have been looking really good recently let's do the other side which is more of a curved brush i don't know if those of you that watch me loads can tell but my lashes are starting to look kind of more like how they used to look when I was a bit younger. Because they've had a few years when I've got older of just like looking a bit more stumpy. But I feel like they're returning. And oh my god, I've just realised that I completely forgot to do my setting spray before I just did my mascara. I always like to do it before so that it doesn't smudge my mascara, but I have been in love with this MAC setting spray. It's not the original Fix Plus. It's the Fix Plus Stay Over Alcohol-Free Long-Lasting Setting Spray. When I first tested this out, I think I did the like whole eyeshadow spraying thing. This does not budge and the mist is super fine. It adds a little bit of hydration to your skin. It's not like a super glowy one. So, oh my God, oily skin, you will love this. But I love the mister. If you put on quite a lot, it like revives your face, makes it look less powdery and it sticks your makeup on. It's one of them ones. It's really nice. I really, really like it. And then finally, I just wanted to mention these two fragrances. This one is a lot more affordable. This one is a lot more expensive. This first one is the Noted Aromas Mykonos scent, which James got me for Christmas. And 
I do switch up my perfumes quite a lot. But as you can see, I've used this one down to here. It's just a really nice, sweet smell. I just Googled and it's supposed to smell like Lady Million, I have to say. I have not tried that fragrance, but it just smells really nice. Very sweet, fresh. And then, oh my God, this Prada perfume. The little triangle one that Emma Watson is in the advert for smells so sweet and gorgeous oh my god it's delicious it's like a sweet fruity one i'll put the notes on the screen maybe this one is it's just stunning i love it i keep spraying up myself and then being like so if you need to preserve it because it's prada but it's a gorgeous fragrance i think that is it from me i hope you guys have enjoyed this if you did please give this a thumbs up don't forget to check out wild i will leave them linked down below and yeah i think the final look turned out pretty cool let me know your favorites and i hope you guys are doing good i will see you in my next video bye